And what they do is they appear to a specific person as that person would recognize them. So there is an aspect to, to the undead. Today and every day, reaching out for innovative ideas in every way. Today's show is brought to you by your future. It comes with a lifetime guarantee. Topic. Let's talk about the dead. Ghostbusting 101. Our guest, Sinar Alexander, is a personal development coach and energetic. She refers to herself as a sensitive, one who sees, feels, and experiences the unseen within and around us. Her mission is to support others in discovering their own personal awareness of these energies and to facilitate the management and refine the skills needed to successfully coexist with that which we cannot see. Sanar works with individuals, groups, and families. She is available to diagnose, define, and clear up any disruption in your home, your psyche, in your work, or sleep state. Sanar says, we are all energetic beings. The more we become of the unseen aspects of ourselves, the more empowered we are to live a fully expressive and successful life. The music you hear in the background is, uh, of the conversation is from Sanar's CD, Beautiful. And this is the first of a two-part conversation with Sanar Alexander. When did you realize you could communicate with dead people? Ah, oh, such a lovely thing. <laughs> I, I don't know how else to ask. I know. It, it almost seems disrespectful, doesn't it? It does. It yeah. Does. But, the, but the truth is that, you know, dead people are people that just are not in physical bodies. So I actually remember being an infant and being a very small child and seeing lights and beings and and creatures that came and went and all sorts of different imaginary essences that I thought was natural because I could see them and feel them but didn't realize until later on that I was the only one seeing them and feeling them. So you were afraid of that? No, just, no. You just didn't know any different? No, I didn't know any different. They were really nice. You know, they were, you know, kind of Peter Panish and Tinkerbellish and happy-go-lucky, light-bright beings. Oh, not according to Hollywood. They're always kind of bad guys. Well, yeah, yeah. Bad guys did come later. Um, uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Uh -oh. Dun, dun, dun. I know. I, I got to hear about it. You got <laughs> well, my parents weren't very happy beings as human beings, and they carried with them a lot of dark and negative energy. And so as my childhood began to move into a more abusive and negative sphere, for lack of a better word at this moment in time, then the dark beings began to gather around me as well. So, what happens when you die? For a lack of a better question to ask, because I, this is not my topic. Isn't this, this a great topic? It, it really is. It really is. It's it's fitting for the occasion. Well, yeah, happy Halloween. Yeah, it's yeah. my favorite. It really is. Um, what happens when you die? Well, there is a part of each and every one of us that is not physical in nature. There is a part of us that's energetic. You know, we are electrical, yes? Our hearts are beating, our brains are thinking. Like, who's doing all of that? There is an essence that came from somewhere, some source of energy. And so when the physical body um, ceases to exist, then that energy that we that I describe as who I know myself to truly be, because I got the beautiful gift of dying several times, meaning 
I really knew that who I was was not this physical body. I could come and go almost as I please. So when you say dying, when did you flatline? You were pronounced dead? or? Well, I had three different abusive experiences. Um, the first time I was maybe two years old and thrown up against a wall and just popped out. <laughs> so, so the body hit the floor. <laughs> My spirit went to the ceiling. I was like, what? <laughs> so that was very strange. And then the people that that did that to me revived me which sucked my energy just like in the movies back into my body and um, as a child I chose to forget that that ever happened and I actually wrote a play and that's what I used every time I had a near-death experience I would tell myself this this never happened and just forgot you know blocked on memory of it I've got your CD is that what's on the CD yes okay. yes Beautiful. Oh, thank Beautiful. Beautiful is the name of the little girl. Beautiful is the name of the essence that um, I felt that she was or is. That essence is still here. So, yeah, at the age of nine, then I was actually, actually choked to death. And so I recall, you know, when, the, when you have to breathe in order to live. <laughs> Let me tell you this. I realize. <laughs> Let me tell you sounds this. Sounds like you're hanging around the wrong <laughs> folks. Here. This is true. This is true. Wow. Um, I was abducted by a couple of men in a car and taken out and and terribly abused and choked to death and I recalled every moment of that and what what it's like to not be able to be in the body any, anymore and so I ex so the spirit beautiful that I knew myself to be my personality exited and tried to leave kind of went down a dark tunnel and I got kind of scared and so then I came back and waited until they were done and then consciously chose to breathe back into the body and they delivered me home, and I chose to forget all about that. Wow. Well, I'll count for the beautiful part. Aw, thank you. Do uh, people take on people? Ghosts, I'll call them? Mm hmm Take on a physical uh, appearance? Some can. Some can, and some can't. Just like people, uh, we all have talents and skills. Uh, when I work with energies that are not currently in a physical body if they have the capability to appear or they want to practice appearing to humans for one reason or another <laughs> sometimes just to freak them out scare them <laughs> or just to practice you know commute they're on another side they're in a different dimension but we can see and feel and sense each other um, so if they want to practice appearing then they will do so to someone who hopefully is capable of seeing interdimensionally so i have to uh, i'm making a face at you i, I mean. know i know <laughs> you're awfully cute the uh, hollywood rendition is uh I don't know, so, sort of a holographic looking thing, or a, yes. do we have clothes? What do we, you know? Do we, <laughs> when we're dead, do we have clothes? Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> holographic this clothes? This is a family show. This so. is a family show. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and I know people get very frightened thinking that um, energies are watching us when we're showering or. Oh God knows. Doing what, yeah. yeah, or what things we're doing as human. And and so <laughs> So don't pick your so, nose so well, you know, actually that they actually have no agenda as to what we are be doing with our behavior. You would hope not. No. no. And what they do is they appear to a specific person as that person would recognize them. So there is an aspect to to the undead dun, 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 that <laughs> that means <laughs> like the soundtrack for <laughs> that means um, I've had several experiences where I have seen uh, let me pick a safe one my grandmother appeared to me when she passed and she was in Washington State and I was in Arizona and not really spending a lot of time with my 
family. And so I felt her come to me, and she came to me as a young woman. Now, I had not known my grandmother as a young woman, and actually had only met her a few times in my childhood, because they lived far away. Um, and, uh, and so it was an experience that I had where she appeared to me, she seemed very young, she seemed very vibrant, and we had some moments together and then she disappeared. And I discovered later that that was the moment that she passed. When I spoke with my mother about my grandmother, her mother, my mother's comment was, yes, she was a very young energy regardless of her age. So I got to see her in her prime as opposed to who I knew her to be at the age of 80. So so she appeared to me as a young woman so that I could connect with her in that way. If she were to appear to, say, my mother or my older sister, she would probably appear as they would recognize her and have a relationship with her. So how do you account for that? Does um, the recipient's brain filter? What? Yeah, yeah. They communicate how we can receive. So for example, um, another example is my grandfather, whom I never met. And he was quite a character. He used to smoke cigars and occasionally, and I don't smoke at all, never have, never will, um, and now you're making a face at me. Uh, no, I have a question. <laughs> Can you smell? I those? smell cigars, and I know it's him. No way. Because there's no, I mean, why would there be a cigar smell in my car? I'd be like, what? Uh, Who's, you know? And so when I finally discovered and saw a picture of him smoking a cigar, I was like, oh, it's you. Okay. And so I can now relate with him energetically as my grandfather that I never got to meet when I smell a cigar and just knows that he's around me. That's so interesting. So if Willie Nelson ever passes, <gasps> you'd be able to smell weed in your car? You or, probably would. <laughs> I man? might hear, yeah, I might hear crazy. <laughs> I don't know. I'm having fun with this. You're, you're, you're a very uh, fun person. So I, I oh, thank you. You're asking some really fun questions. Uh, yeah. And I like the title you gave this, Ghost Busting 101. Isn't that fun? Yeah. The, my burning question is, why aren't you just freaking out scared of something like this? Quite often you are. I know. Because it's an energy. It's like, have you ever been in a lightning storm, like up in the mountains? And... Yeah. Uh, I think I know where you're going. You can feel. Yeah, you can feel the electricity. Yeah, the one that comes to mind was I was painting a house and I was on an aluminum ladder. Oh, yeah. <laughs> which is probably the I might as well put a lightning rod on my head or something. But yeah, the hair stood up. Yeah. And that's what, you get that sensation? Yes, okay. yes. And so either fortunately or unfortunately, I would go into the mountains when there was a storm and go, oh, lightning, and I'd get as close as I could. But then when it started striking the ground around me, I would think, well, this is probably not a very good idea. <laughs> Turn around and leave. But, but for me, that's interesting and that's energizing. And so when you encounter an energy that is interdimensionally close to you, then you feel it with your senses, with your skin or the hair, you know, goes up on the back of your neck or on your arm or you feel it. And so, unfortunately, that's how you feel when you're afraid as well. And so most people, when they feel that, they get really scared. Like, oh my gosh. And the minute you've gone, oh my gosh, it's broken the connection and then you can't hear them or see them. If you freak out, it's hard to maintain that energetic connection. You're describing a sensation I've had before. But uh -huh. uh, now if I feel that way, I'm gonna start looking around to see if uh, something freaky's gonna happen. <laughs> I don't know. I keep going back to like, say Hollywood stuff. But <laughs> I, I don't know, but does it work that way? Is there... So in, in, Ghost, in Ghost Busting 101, which yeah. is actually a talk I give, Oh. There are three parts, and the first part is don't freak out, like don't 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 be afraid because if you're afraid, 
then it's kind of like if you're afraid of a dog, what's the dog going to oh, do? Yeah, yeah. It's going to come and bite you, <laughs> I think right? Dealing with a similar energy as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you're not afraid, then then that energy is not engaged with you. And so the first question you ask is, who are you? That way you're holding your own energy within it. You're holding your own space with an energy that has come close to you interdimensionally. And so if you can stop, not be afraid, and just say, who are you? And wait to see if you get some kind of an answer. And if the answer is, I'm Jim Morrison. <laughs> then you say, then, cool, dude. <laughs> yeah, I see you broke on through to the other side. But yeah. that's when, you know, if something responded, now I'm freaking out. Now that's going to, that's yeah. a showstopper. And so no, on. no. Then the next question is, what do you want? Yeah. Huh? Well, yeah. Well, what do you want? Who are you and what do you want? Because they're appearing to you for a reason. Mm-hmm. They don't do it just for kicks, really. There's a lot of reasons for ghosts to appear. But it's, you know, the the paradigm of working with interdimensionalities. <laughs> I don't even know if that's a word. It is, is, now. is. It is now. Is holding your own space. It's all about you. You are having this experience. You're having this paranormal experience. And so actually you're in charge. And even if you think it's a demon, even if you think it's a bad thing, even if they're out to get you, it's like the dog thing. If you're afraid and you run, they're going to chase you. They're like, woohoo, look what we got. You know, we got them on the run. So if you do ask, what do you want? What would a response be? Why would something, Why like would something appear? Yeah. You have to wait and find out. Could be, could be an angel. Could be someone who used to live where you live that's left over, like, 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 hey, <laughs> you're in my kitchen. <laughs> this was my kitchen back in 1894. <laughs> like, Those wait are the a minute. stories that, that I hear about, like, yeah. <clears throat> somebody from the Civil War. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so quite often when people are renovating older homes, they're breaking apart a physical structure. The energy is attached to a physical structure and an experience. So when someone comes in and goes, oh, cool, what a neat old house. Let me renovate it. And it breaks up all sorts of energies that were attached to that. So it would be like an earthquake coming and destroying your home. You might be a bit upset. That's interesting uh, from a real estate aspect. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, for sure. So, yeah, I don't think we have a form for that. Uh, do not renovate because uh, it might bring out a poltergeist situation or something like that. <laughs> or call Sonar and I will come and clear it for you. So, so you so actually do that kind of work? I do, actually. I've done it a lot um, with people who have purchased homes and just feel like there's leftover energies or... Um, a poltergeist situation where there is some kind of fermenting energy that is taken over and I can come in and decipher what's going on and release it get well I hate to say get rid of it but I kind of disassemble the energetics that are holding that old behavior in place and then clean it so it's fresh and clean so it's kind of it's a new palette from which you can create so you're not trying to create something over an old an old you know old experience is that a lengthy process how do you do that it depends how do you well, that goes back to when did this start? With you? I was born this way, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, seeing and sensing, and um, it depends on the intensity of the experience and who is um, who is the anchor for the experience in the home. So, quite often, it's attached. The experience is attached to a human being of some kind. continue with Sonar on the next episode Ghostbusting 101 Part 2 
Check out the show notes for this episode on our website, Better Each Day Podcast Radio Show. And until then... Support for Better Each Day comes from BruceHilliardHomes.com. For a better day in buying or selling a home, search BruceHilliardHomes.com or visit our website, Better Each Day, for more information. And while you're there, subscribe to the show. It's free. That's BruceHilliardHomes.com, Windermere Real Estate. And make it better each day. radio show with Bruce Hilliard. We'll be back with a new horizon, but until then, honor the future. It comes with a lifetime guarantee. We're all just trying to make the next day a bit better.